Hi, this is Graphically Alex coming at you with all things fat related. If that's something that interests you, please subscribe. I'd love to have you. For today, what I wanted to talk about was once again, fat acceptance TikTok. I wanted to actually talk about something kind of weird and niche, I know, but this is my Instagram algorithm's fault. My Instagram algorithm must know that I'm gay and must know that I'm fat. And so it sent me this creator, which he uploads his TikToks onto Instagram. Now, what I wanted to talk about within the angle of this is how interesting it is that now, you know, at least within gay spaces, you know, certain OF creators are now starting to try to grift to the fat acceptance rhetoric. W guys are hot shit. Like, please don't think for a second that you're not. Like, just, just think about this for one second, right? You have a fat ass, you have nice ass love handles, you're cuddly as hell, and that dump truck jiggle. You are so hot. On the surface, this, it's not really hugely a problem. There's nothing wrong with anybody's preferences, as we've talked about. There's nothing wrong with liking somebody who is bigger. Obviously, you know, people exist that either don't care about different body sizes or are attracted to different body sizes. That's not my issue. My main issue is just the sort of conflation of being chubby versus being super morbidly obese. And I think that, again, I'm not expecting, you know, a super, super nuanced take what I don't appreciate is the implicit messaging that those two things are the same, that somebody being chubby, somebody being super morbidly obese are the exact same, or that there wouldn't be certain mental health problems within somebody super morbidly obese that would have, that would create issues within a relationship. Being actively anti-chubby is a huge issue in the gay community. They've done actual studies on anti-fat bias within the gay community, and it's worse than in heterosexual couples. Essentially, this study took two groups, uh, straight men and gay men, and they rated how likely outcomes would be if they were interacting with a fat man. But first and foremost, I want to look at this from a broad perspective. How odd is it that somebody who does prawn, as we will call it, is making these arguments. How odd is it that in even this area of adult entertainment, these messages are being pushed. It is being pushed everywhere, it seems like. I just find it so incredibly weird that politics is even entering into this weird niche area of life in such a way that these unhealthy messages are still being pushed. Now, I have talked about a lot how, yes, fat phobia does exist. Fat phobia is a minor issue, although an issue. But to push these messages of you're never going to find anybody if you're fat, or you're never going to do this if you're fat, if you're never going to do that. So you see how he has kind of contradicted his past statement think that people need to think more critically about the conflicting messages that they're receiving because this kind of stuff will drive you crazy. This is the kind of thing where it's such a double speak and such a, I, you know, think that you guys are great and I think you should, you would have no issue with dating. How could you ever think that about yourself while at the same time in the next video saying the gay community is completely against you if you're fat it's really toxic, blah, 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 let me lecture you on the politics of it. It was such a huge shift for me that I was like, okay, this is interesting. But again, it's not about the actual messaging. It's not about actually caring about people. It is about making money, getting clicks, likes, views, etc. That's all it is. And I just want fat people in general to be aware. And I also want people that aren't fat to be aware that we are getting these messages quite literally sent to us. This was sent to me by algorithm. I was not searching for this at all. Gay men reported greater likelihood that the overweight man would be blatantly ignored, treated rudely, or mocked behind his back. Okay, so as far as the actual content of what he's saying, I would say it's not surprising at all. I think a lot of gay men, they grow up 
at least in my generation, I don't know as much about Gen Z, but they grow up feeling very rejected. They get a lot of these toxic messages. Nobody will like you because you're gay and everybody hates you, right? It's a lot of the similar rhetoric that fat people get, actually, but it's a little bit different, obviously. And there is still more of an actual hatred of gay people out there versus with the fat issue, there isn't. Even... <laughs> Even in groups that can't stand fat people, it's never going to have that visceral hatred that people that can't stand gay people are going to have. So it's very different. That being said, a lot of gay men, they are, like I said, taught that everybody hates them, so they become very paranoid. They start to see things that aren't there. A lot of times gay men are caught up in imagination, and they think, I'm going to find this type of person in my head and I want this person to be of a certain status so that I can have this. There's some of this in the heterosexual community, but in the gay community, it is so fierce, especially because in certain situations, gay people do have to sacrifice a lot to be in a relationship where they have to sacrifice like some of their family accepting them or a certain social status, or anything that gay people may not have, to, or that straight people may not have to. Not always. There are situations where straight people do have to do that for relationships as well. But the issue is when you do have to sacrifice a lot for a relationship, you tend to want something that is perfect, or you want the perfect guy. You want it to be worth it. So in the gay community in general, it is very toxic. It's a super, super toxic community. I think that there is a sort of media message that gay people are all really nice. It's not true at all. I'll be the first one to say it. I am not a super nice person whatsoever. I am very feminine, and that's fine, but I'm not very nice. Gay men in general are not nice. There's going to be a few here or there, but a lot of times there is an inner hostility in other gay men. I've seen it. Um, you know, I've done it, like, I'm just going to be honest. So when I hear the results of this study, I'm not surprised at all. I think you could find people treating people nasty for literally any reason, because as the saying goes, nobody hates gay men as much as gay men. That has been my experience. I've been bullied by other gay men way more than I've ever by anybody else. I've been tried, people, gay men have tried to control me more than anyone else. They've had, they feel a sort of ownership over me because we have a shared identity and it's very toxic. So I'm not at all surprised that especially within the confines of a relationship, on average, the gay community is going to have so much judgment, so much hatred and, you know, complete lack of acceptance. Uh, gay people in general are the least accepting people. I'm sure that I'm not saying anything that you guys haven't seen in your life if you've been around gay people enough. That's not to say that gay people should be hated or anything, right? Everybody can be mean. Everybody can be unaccepting. But I just think that the point is the study does not surprise me. I'm sure it's true. I'm sure it is. Um, I do think that things have shifted a bit over the past few years but it's still highly toxic and there's a lot of problems in that area that are with they are beyond the scope of this channel but we're talking more about the fatness issue so as i said the actual fact that this message is even taking place is very odd to me and it is another layer of that toxicity it's another thing you know straight men will never deal with an a female of person telling them that it's okay for them to be fat or giving them weird conflicting messages. It's another way that it's harder. So again, I know that we criticize things like intersectionality a lot. A lot of my followers, you know, I know a lot of you guys would not like stuff like that, but there are some layers of truth to it, especially within social things and especially within algorithm things. Cause like I said, I was targeted with this type of content for a reason. Anti-chubby bias and anti-chubby rhetoric is a huge problem. 
And a lot of these men need to sit down and really examine why they're anti-chubby. Because it's totally irrational. So it's actually not difficult to understand whatsoever. It's really just that a lot of gay men have the toxic idea that your partner is a reflection of you. And in some ways that can be true, but you're not perfect either, right? Nobody's perfect. So to expect any kind of perfection in any partner is extremely toxic. And honestly, for any gay men that are watching, your dating pool is a lot less than straight people. So it's like, I understand. I care a lot. You know, I wanted the perfect person for me. I totally get it. But it took a lot of time to find that person. And it's a lot of work. And there's usually relocation required you are at a disadvantage just because there's so much less people that are gay and that's okay. You can work with it and whatever. That's your struggle. That's a part of your life. I have no, it is what it is, right? I've come to terms with it. But at the end of the day, if every single thing about the person has to be perfect and you're not perfect, right? It's never going to work out. So I think a lot of gay men, they're just, They'll think of any reason not to be with somebody. They'll think of anything to cut it off or do this or do that just because they're toxic in general. So I just think making this about the fatness issue, it's not really that important in terms of the community. I have a friend who is fit and he doesn't have that much of a better experience than I did. It's not really an issue that is just about the fatness issue. It's just an issue within, you know, in general, within the gay community. So I think, again, trying to shoehorn something into fat acceptance rhetoric, that's what they always do because the fat acceptance rhetoric is not real. They always have to bring in other issues <laughs> or like race or like issues within the gay community or anything really, gender dynamics, right? They try to do all this because there really isn't any substance to fat acceptance in and of itself. And so that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing a reach. When I say the gay community is actively anti-fat, I obviously don't mean that you can't have your own preferences. Like if you aren't into chubby guys for whatever reason, that's totally fine. The so we'll start there. That's good. I'm glad he said that. I'm very glad that that's acknowledged. One point for Gryffindor. Let's see what else he has to say. The issue comes with the bullying, the harassment, the blatant disrespect, and just like general hurtful language directed towards chubby men. So you can have whatever preference you want, but being chubby in the gay community just kind of makes you feel like shit, and that's because of how other people treat you. As somebody who is in the gay community and chubby, I will say that there have been experiences, you know, back when I was on the apps, it was awful. But like I said, I had a best friend at the time, I still, I still do, but he was in shape and his experience was not all that much better. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you're getting attention or adoration if it's from somebody that you don't want to be with. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you're being ignored. You know, I think I actually avoided a lot of pain and a lot of really difficult situations because I didn't have to deal with people wanting to SA me in public. You know, a lot of gay men, they do that kind of stuff and it's a huge issue. I didn't have to worry about going to the gay bar with my friend and having somebody touch me up and down and do all this weird stuff like my friend did. And he's had many experiences with that type of thing. So as much as there are, can be issues, mostly when you're really big as a gay person or as a gay man, at least, I would say you're often just ignored. Your existence may not be acknowledged, but in some cases with super toxic people, it is better to be ignored than to be harassed. So it's more complex than what he's saying. And that would be something that would be a bit more of a fat privilege within the gay community that I didn't have to go through those things that he did. And again, there's issues, there's problems. These are things that I consider upon my weight loss journey. I worry about that kind of thing happening to me. 
I want to make sure that I'm always safe. You know, I want to keep in safe spaces, so to speak. I don't want to be in those kind of gay spaces when I am thinner because I don't want to go through some of what my friend has gone through. It's not something that I could handle as well as him that I would appreciate at all. I wouldn't like that kind of thing. So it's like, I do understand what he's saying, but there's always two sides to a coin. And again, when it comes to the issue of fatness, it's just, they make it about all this other crap. And it is just about the health. <laughs> if I compare myself to my best friend, he has none of the health issues that I have. None of those barriers, right? But there are certain benefits, even in being fat, that people don't always acknowledge. That doesn't mean that it's worth all of the drawbacks. It absolutely is not. That is why I will continue losing weight. But you have to just consider everything when you're trying to make social content like this. And I think it's a bit off. Now, do I think his message is extremely toxic? No. I think, you know, when he's not conflicting himself, he can actually be kind of okay. But at the end of the day, it's still a problem, right? And it's still not completely on point. And I get it. He is not fat. He doesn't have the experience of it. But that's, again, the issue I've talked about a lot, where a lot of people that talk about these issues, they don't have experience with it. And that's why I'm here. All right, you guys. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please do like the video. It really helps. Please do leave your comments below. I just want to say um, I appreciate you guys so much and I appreciate you guys giving me a little bit of time to adjust to things. I am moving in real life and it's stressful. <laughs> so I'm excited for things to come. I have a lot of things planned once I've moved and I have other things coming on this channel. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy what I have coming too. But I will talk to you guys again very soon. Have a great rest of your day, night, whatever. I will see you guys later. Bye.